Today's lesson is on the basic order of operations. We're going to use the order of operations to evaluate expressions. So why does order matter? Well, when you get dressed, do you put on your shoes or your socks first? Does it matter the order you do that? When you make cereal, for example, do you fill the bowl with milk or do you fill the bowl with the cereal first? In most languages, the meaning of words depend on the order. For example, sign the check doesn't mean the same thing as check the sign. Okay, so in our lives and in math, right, we need to do things in a certain order to make sure they turn out right. You know, try to come up with some more examples in your own life where the order matters. Take a moment to think about it. Well, in my life, I see examples, for example, building a house. If we're going to build a house, you know, I have to build the foundation before I can put up the walls. I have to put up the walls before I can put on the roof. Even if I'm going to school, right, I have to have a high school diploma before I can get a college diploma. If I'm watching TV, right, I first have to turn on the TV and then select the channel I want to watch. And we can tell that in real life and in your lives, right, the order that things happen in is of extreme importance. So in math, we also need a standard way to evaluate expressions and equations. And the order of operations is what tells us how to do this. So take a look at this example here, 7 plus 4 times 3. How should I solve this problem? Well, do we get the answer 33 or 19? Let's see, if I decide to do addition first, then I could add 7 plus 4 to get 11, and then multiply 11 times 3 and get 33. So I didn't make any math errors there, right? My math is correct. But suppose I decided to do the multiplication first. Then I would have 4 times 3, which is 12, and then add 12 to 7, which is 19. All right, so even though I performed the operations themselves correctly, the order that I did it in changed the answer drastically. Do we get 33 or 19? Well, in order to make it so that everyone gets the same answer, a long time ago somebody decided that we need an order in which we do this, a standard order that everyone does this so that we end up with the same answer. And that's when the order of operations was invented. So they came up with the order of operations, which we remember using the acronym PIMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to help us remember the order. So the P stands for parentheses. Right, so this is an example of left and right parentheses. And you can think of anything inside of them as being a group. So it's like a little basket that holds everything inside it. And that's one group. Brackets, you'll see those sometimes, and they mean the exact same thing as parentheses. The E stands for exponents or powers. So when you take a number and you raise it to a 2 or to a 3, like you saw in your previous lesson, that's an exponent. So if I wrote one out just to remind us of what an exponent is, if I write 3 to the second power, right, this is an exponent, right? That superscript on the 3 we call an exponent. The next we do multiply and divide from left to right. So multiply and divide have the same order or same priority in the order, right? You just do them from left to right when you see them in an expression. And then finally, we do add and subtract from left to right. So add and subtract also have the same priority when we're evaluating an expression. So basically, it's just these four steps you have to remember. You do parentheses first. And then once you have those done, you do the exponents. And then multiply and divide have the same priority. You do them from left to right. And add and subtract finally is last. And we do those from left to right. And again, we always generally remember this with the acronym, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, so let's take a look at that previous problem. So now we know that we should be doing multiply before add and subtract. When I go through a problem, here's the original problem. I just go through PIMDAS. I ask myself, are there any parentheses? No, I don't see any. Okay, so next, are there any exponents? No, I don't see any exponents. All right, so next would be multiply and divide from left to right. So I go through this problem. Oh, look, I have some multiply, 4 times 3 here. 
So I do that first until we get 12. Okay, so then now I'm looking at this expression and I have no more multiply or divide, so now I move on to add and subtract and I do that from left to right and we simply add the 7 plus the 12 to get 19. Here's a quick little video to remind you of the order of operations and maybe have a little fun. In the same step, addition and subtraction. If you got the nerve, from left to right, first come, first serve. Parentheses first, two times four, the product's eight. Are you ready for more? Exponents next, two squared is four. Let's move down like we did before. Time to divide or multiply. Let's see what we got. Take a look at the signs. Divide the eight by the two. The quotient's four, and we're almost through. It's finally time to add or subtract. Eight's the answer, and that's a fact. Turn that down! Parentheses first, exponents next. Multiplication and division in the same step. Addition and subtraction. If you got the nerve, from left to right. First come, first serve. Two! Times six, the product's twelve. Put it back in the mix. Exponents next, three squared is nine. When you know the tricks, it don't take much time. Now we divide or multiply. Let's see what we got. Take a look at the signs. Nine divided by nine is one. The answer's close, man. We're almost done. Four minus one has a difference of three. When we add the twelve, we get fifteen. Parentheses first, exponents next. Multiplication and division in the same step. Addition and subtraction. If you got the nerve, from left to right, first come, first serve. All right, so after watching that video, let's put it to practice. Let's go ahead and solve this problem. 4 divided by 2 times 2 minus 3, using the order of operations. So again, I ask myself, I remind myself of PIMDAS, and if you have to write it out at first, go ahead and write out PIMDAS, just to remind yourself of the order. So I'm, when I'm writing PIMDAS out, I'm actually kind of saying in my head, I'm saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And then I remember that multiply and divide really have the same priority, and so do add and subtract, and we do them from left to right. So I go through and I ask myself, okay, P, for parentheses. Any parentheses? Nope, don't see any. Next, exponents. In this example, have no exponents. Next, multiply and divide. And we do those from left to right as I come across them. Okay, so look, the very first thing here, I see a division problem. So I'm going to go ahead and perform this operation. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And we get that 2 times 2. Notice how I just bring everything else down. I'm going to do that one step at a time. Since the order of operations multiply and divide have the same priority, you might have saw in that video that you can kind of do them in one step. But really, you should do them just from left to right as you come across them. And at first, do one at a time. So I'm going to do just the 4 divided by 2. Now next, here's multiply again. So I'm going to do 2 times 2 is 4, and then bring down the minus 3, and then finally 4 minus 3 is 1. Let's try this example. Okay, so again, if you need to write out the PIMDAS, go ahead and do that. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, so P, we know it stands for parentheses. Oh, this time I see parentheses. Remember, they act as a little group. So we have the left parenthesis that's being closed by the right parenthesis here, and everything inside them is a little group that has to be done first. It is possible to have a problem where we have parentheses inside of parentheses. 
and then you work from my inside out, I'd like to say. In this case, I'm going to do the parenthesis operation here, 3 plus 7. So I'm going to do that first. It's the only operation to do inside the parentheses. If there was more than one operation, I would go through PIMDAS again. And I would say, are there parentheses in the parentheses? You know, are there exponents? Are there multiply and divide? And in this case, we just have the add and subtract here. So that's the only thing to do is add 3 plus 7 in those parentheses. So we get 3 plus 7 is 10 in this first step. So notice how I copied and brought down everything else. Okay, so I wrote the 10 inside the parentheses here, right, just to separate it from the 3. But when we write two things right next to each other, that operation is multiplication, if you haven't seen that before. So we don't always put the time symbol or the dot. I'm going to go through the order again. And what should we do next? What do you think we should do next? Are there any more parentheses? Well, yeah, I have the parentheses here, but there's no operations in to do inside them, right? I just have a 10 there. So next, according to PEMDAS, I should do exponents. And I can see that I have an exponent here. So we are raising 10 to the second power. And remember, that means multiply 10 by its own self, two times. So we have 10 times 10. That's not 10 times 2. Right? That it means 10 times 10. And this squared here, this raising to the power of 2 only applies to the base 10. So I did 10 times 10 and I got 100. So I want to make sure you understand how I got the 100 there. Right? I multiplied 10 times 10 because that's what 10 to the second power means. All right, so I'm looking through what's my resulting expression here and I have no more exponents. So now I'm going to move on to multiply and divide from left to right. Okay, so I do what I come across first. And remember, this means multiply here. So this does mean 3 times 100. All right, and 3 times 100 is 300. So now I'm only left with the expression 300 divided by 5. So I do the last step here, which is divide 305, and I get 60. All right, so here's this last example. And it looks long and complicated, but we can break it down just going through the steps of PIMDAS. So once you practice this a few times, it becomes easier and easier. And since all mathematics after this depends on your understanding and application of the order of operations, it is important that you are able to do these problems correctly. So at the end of this lesson, you know, I have example problems for you to try. And I want you to work them out in, on your own, on paper. Then I'll give you the answers, and I want you to check your answers and make sure that you're getting them right. And if you're not getting them right, I want you to understand where you're getting them wrong. All right, so let's do this long example here. So it looks like a whole lot of work. I'm going to start out. I write down my PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's what I'm saying to myself as I'm writing it. And then now I just go through the expression and I check. All right, so according to the order of operations, I need to do parentheses first. All right, so I see some parentheses here. And inside the parentheses is only one operation, the add six and one. So notice I just did that one step on this next line here and replace that with seven. Okay, so I'm looking at this expression. There's no more parentheses, so I move on to exponents. All right, I do see uh, some exponents right here. Right, there's our 10 squared again, or 10 raised to the second power, which does mean 10 times 10, so that's a 100. Okay, so we did exponents. Any more exponents? No, I don't see any, so we're moving on to multiply and divide. Their group, they have the same priority, so we do it from left to right. Left to right. So I'm going through this expression this way from left to right. And the first thing I see here is this operation, right? That negative 3 times 6. So I copy everything else down, and negative 3 times 6 is minus 18. And then notice I just bring everything else down. Just do one step at a time. All right, so I'm still on the multiply and divide step here. 
and I'm going through my expression here from left to right, and I'm looking for any multiply or divide. Oh, here's multiply right here. So I have some more multiply. So that's going to be my next step. So notice in, when I brought down the next line here, all I did is replace that 7 times 4 with what it is, which is 28. And then I brought everything else down. So now I ask myself, okay, I've done multiply. Is there any other multiply or divide in this expression? No. The only thing we have left is add and subtract. They have the same priority, so we do them from left to right. All right, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do 20 minus 18 and get 2. So this is all I did, where I'm left or right, brought everything else down. And then I'm still going to go through and do from left to right. So I would do next 2 plus 100. And that's 102 plus 28. And then finally, I can add those two and get 130. So could you have done this all in one line here? Yes. But I don't suggest you do that until you have a lot of practice doing it. You know, you could have said 20 minus 18 is 2, plus 100 is 102, plus 28 is 130. Right, when you get to steps like that. Okay, so now I want you to try it. Take a look at these five examples. I want you to take a moment to pause the video and pull out a pen and paper and work out each of these examples using the order of operations. Start with writing out PEMDAS. All right, so what is important here is that you're doing the right thing in the right order. Now, every once in a while, we all make a mistake where we multiply a number wrong or add a number wrong. I'm more concerned, though, that you're doing the right step first. And then you can check your answer afterwards with a calculator. And this is another good thing about a calculator and a bad thing. Right, so if you just use the calculator like on Windows or a hand calculator like most of you have, and you just start typing in like 16 minus 2 equals times 10 minus 3, it's not taking into account the order of operations if you don't put it in correctly. Now some of the newer calculators or online calculators will do that correctly if you enter it in correctly but in our in the old days right I had to go through and make sure that in the calculator I had to go through and do the order of operations myself I would tell it I'll do this part first 10 minus 3 because I know that's in parentheses and then I'd have to times by 2 and then I'd have that answer and then I have to do 16 minus that answer all on the calculator if you needed to check that way so that's why it's almost easier Right, for you to do some of those steps out first and write down the resulting expression, then solve. All right, so by now you should have been able to work through as many of these as you want. I want to make sure that you have the right answer so that you can check them. So the answer to number one is two. The answer to number, excuse me, to number one is two. The answer to number two is 13. Number three is equal to 92. Number four is equal to eight. And then number five is equal to 86. So if you didn't get those answers, I want you to look through your steps again and see where you didn't follow the order of operations, PEMDAS. Or again, maybe you made a multiplication or addition error. 